on File and go down to Open Scene, and let's open up Mechanics4.mb. All right, so what we have in this file is we have a basic Pac-Man character with some pellets that he's going to eat. Now you'll notice that Pac-Man is not completely yellow. He has a piece up here that's green and a piece down here that's blue. And I've just color coded these so that's a little bit easier to distinguish the moving parts from the main body of the character here. So we're going to jump into the animation process. I'm going to make sure my time slider here is on frame one. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to key this bottom mouthpiece right where it is. So I'm going to go to Rotate Y, right click, and go to Key Selected. Alright, now I'm going to press Q for my selection tool, and then I'm going to select the top mouthpiece right here, the green piece. Go over here to Rotate Y, right click, and go to Key Selected. So here on frame one, I've got the position keyed for the top and the bottom of the jaw in the open position. Okay. So what we're going to do is we'll animate the jaw opening and closing and then we'll animate the character moving across the screen. So I'm going to go to frame 10 and I'm going to just leave this top mouthpiece open or in the up position and I'm going to type in a value of 0 on rotate Y right here and it's going to move the top piece uh, the top jaw into the closed position. I'll switch over here to the bottom piece of the mouth here, click on rotate Y, I'll change the rotate Y value here to zero and press enter. So now what we have is we have animation from frame 1 to 10 and it's just the mouth in the open, open position and then the closed position. So rather than going uh, every 10 frames and selecting these and setting keyframes, what we can do is we can just copy them. So I'm going to hit Q. I'm going to select the bottom mouthpiece and the top piece right here. So they're both selected. I'll go here to frame 1. I'm going to right click and go to copy right here. Now I'm going to go from frame 1. I'm going to click on frame 20. I'll right click now and go to paste and then paste again right here. So if you look at this pattern, we have the same position every 20 frames, okay? So if we went from 1 to 20, the next open position for the mouth is going to be on frame 40. So I'll click on frame 40, then I'll right click, go to paste and then go to the second paste option right here. So we'll do 40, and then I'll go to 60, right click, paste, and then the second paste, and then I'll go to 80. I'm going to right click, go to paste, and then one more time, paste right here. So we've, we've keyed in the uh, mouth, the open mouth position for our entire clip here. So now it's time to do the mouth in the closed position. So I'm going to click on frame 10 right here. I can see that both of these pieces are still selected. On frame 10, I'm going to right click and go to copy. And then I'm going to go to frame 30. I'm going to right click on frame 30 and go to paste, like so. All right. Now I'm going to go to frame 50. I'll right click and go to paste. Now I'm going to click on frame 70, then I'll right click and go to paste. So now if I hit the play button right here, you can see we've got the mouth opening and closing. Now whenever I copy and paste keyframes, it does affect my graph and it doesn't always look the way that I want it to. So I'm going to go to Window animation editors and then I'll go to the graph editor right here. So you can see here we've got some curves in our graph and I wanted to keep everything at linear which is what we set our curves to our graphs to at the beginning of this unit. So I'm gonna just marquee select. I'll click and drag 
all the way around our entire graph here. And then I'm going to click on this button right here, Linear Tangents. Okay. Now I can close the graph editor and I'll hit play. And we've got our very robotic um, chomping motion here for Pac-Man. Okay. So now that um, we've animated the jaw, we can actually go in and change the color on this. So I'm going to go to Window, Rendering Editors, and then the Hypershade. And here I'm just going to take the uh, Lambert 8 here, which is our yellow shader, and I'm going to middle mouse click on that and drag it over to the top piece of the mouth. And I'll do the same thing, middle mouse click and drag it over to the bottom piece on the mouth here. So now when we hit play, we can't even tell that those are separate pieces. Okay. So next thing we want to do is we want to animate the uh, Pac-Man character going across the screen here. So I'm going to click over here on this section. I don't want to click here or here because that's where the jaw is. I'm going to click on this side in the back of Pac-Man. Okay. I'm on frame one. I'm going to click on Translate X right here. I'll right click, go to Key Selected. We've set a keyframe on frame one. Okay. I'm going to go to frame 80 on the timeline here. Then I'm just going to move the character across the frame here so that I'm actually at a translate x value of approximately 80 over here. So our, our time is at 80 and our translate is also at approximately 80. So now when I hit play, we can see he's moving across the screen. Now if he's not moving across the screen, it might be that your auto keyframe toggle was not turned on. And if that's the case, just go to frame 80 and then right click and go to key selected right here. Alright, so the last thing we need to do is we need to animate these pellets. They should be disappearing as he eats each one of them. So this is quite easy to do. It's just going to take a few minutes to animate each one. So starting here on frame one, I'm going to select this first pellet right here. And um, what we'll do is we just need to go to the point where the last time we're going to see that pellet, and it looks like the mouth is closing right here. So at frame nine, we see the pellet, and then at frame 10, the mouth is closed. So we'll just go to frame nine. I'll click on the visibility, right click, go to key selected. So we can see the visibility is set to on. Now I'll go to frame 10, and I'll just type in off right here, and press enter. So now, if I move the time slider, you can see he bites down on that, and then that pellet disappears. So let's do that for the other three pellets here. So I'm going to go to frame, let's see, 29. Before we do that, though, I need to select the pellet. So I'll go to frame 29 right here. I'll click on visibility. I'll right click and go to key selected. Go to frame 30 and I'm going to just go over here and type in off. And that'll take care of our second pellet here. So I'm going to select the third pellet here and I'm going to go to frame looks like 49. Click on the visibility channel right click, go to key selected. And go to frame 50 here, I'll click where it says on and change it to off. Alright, so we can see that's disappearing and then the last one we'll go to frame 69, key our channel, and then I'll go to frame 70 and I'll change the visibility to off. And then now when we play our animation, each of these pellets is disappearing as he chomps down on it. Okay. So that concludes the first part of the exercise. In the second part, we're going to go ahead and render out a video file for this exercise.